When you release a product into the world, your work isn't finished, it's just beginning. Once it's launched, the best product leaders study how customers are using the product and use those insights to continually make it better. Take long-running space MMO, EVE Online. EVE is a living community with thousands of players interacting with each other daily. And sometimes, the community figures out a better way to do things. Listen in as EVE co-creator Hilmar Peterson describes three different tools that the EVE devs created to support emergent player behavior. So the game is pretty well built up for people to resolve emotional conflict. And trying to have feelings go away is exactly what you don't want to do in a game. A game should generate as much and as many complicated feelings as you could possibly have. And overall, I think in the world today, like people should even have more feelings. And sometimes we seem to think it's a bad thing that somebody has negative feelings. We have taken the reverse approach hate and fear and even like gluttony and pride and vanity and all these things are part of the human condition and you want to create almost like an environment where you can vac these feelings to create friction and heat and cold and love and hate and that combined with the trust and the composability and the flexibility etc that really allows us to grow through learning how to interact with people that have different opinions and feelings than you. So we do try to create tools, frankly, for people to generate animosity. And we have found that is a pretty important foundation for us to function correctly as humans. I think what we're dealing with a lot in the world today is that we have created these echo chambers where we meet a lot of people that just agree with us and we like being there. So every time we meet somebody that doesn't agree with us, it's somehow a bad thing and they need to be canceled. Even online doesn't really work like that because it's a more primitive society. It's just nobody really cares if you feel bad about things. Just do something about it. We implemented fairly simple tools. There was a corporation system, very rudimentary. You could just really decide to be in a corporation. Now you had that association. People could see if they made you, what corporation you belong to. Later, we added uh, more sort of tools for organizations to scale a bit without having to trust every single one. There's a limit to that. So to get corporations to become bigger, you need to provide tools to create structure where you can start to compartmentalize trust. This division of the corporation trust each other, the lead of that trusts the leadership, and that's you built the corporate hierarchy around that. And this was largely done by just observing what players were doing and learning from that and implementing systems and putting them in the game. Great example was the alliance system, which is like a conglomerate of corporations that band together to form an alliance where each and every one are their own corporation, but together they are in a cartel setup. That was again inspired by looking at what players were doing. So as the world grows and becomes more sophisticated, we observe and implement tools to give to players to continue along the journey they had already started on. That has really been the trick to it. And every time we do that, we do amazing things. Every time we do, try to do something different, and we've tried many things, we're maybe not so much hitting our stride. Plex is like many things around Eve Online, something that Eve players invented. We used to have these CD keys. When the game comes out, you bought a box, there was a CD key. Inside the box, you used the CD key to create an account and get a month of your first month of subscription. That later turned into like an electronic time code system, what was called ETC. And we observed that Eve players were trading the electronic time codes on the forum for money inside the game. So I have money in the game. I don't want to pay for my subscription this month. So I buy an electronic game time code from another ETH player that has bought it from Miller or later on it bought it from us. So there was this kind of bartering going on prepaid game time. So we took those two kind of things and we merged them into this concept of Plex. It basically means that you can 
play EM online for free, collect about like at the time when we launched this about 300 million ISK and you could buy for that a Plex and that's the equivalent of one month of subscription. We had the game practically for all intents and purposes free to play as late 2008 when we released this system. It does provide a pretty solid, quitable foundation for how to monetize a game like Game Online. Many games have copied since and been quite vocal that it copied it from us. So yes, we involve players quite a bit in the design of the game. Good ideas can come from anywhere. And many of the best ideas in EVE came from the players. And that's a big reason why EVE is the longest running MMO with many players engaged for over 10 years. Of course, listening to players isn't just for game companies. No matter what industry you're in, it's always a good idea to study how customers are using your products in the wild. What you find out might just surprise you. Want more tips on innovating smarter? Sign up for our newsletter at GameThinking.io. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get more great tips from experts like Helmar and other luminaries. Let's get smarter together. I'll see you in the next video.